Hey guys, how are you doing? Now there are quite a few people that follow my channel who are experienced developers in the sense they have more than five and six years of experience. And uh, after a while, after you've been programming for a while, you want to start learning things from a macro perspective, from a technology architecture perspective, right? And this is why I'm starting this series where I'm going to be sharing all of my knowledge uh, with regards to technology architecture. And I'll be sharing information from five different books. So I'll be compiling all that information um, and I'll be basically sharing all that information here in the series. And um, this series is going to be quite long in the sense I'll be making these 10, 15 minute videos and uh, but they'll keep continuing for a very long period of time. So until all my uh, content has, has exhausted. Um, that's because technology architecture is a big subject Okay, and it has um, it has a lot of topics, a lot of things to cover, and uh, there's not enough content on this on the internet. There are really good books that exist on the internet, but there's not enough videos or articles that you can read about technology architecture, at least from my experience. So I had a lot of trouble, uh, you know, four or five years back when I started learning uh, from an architect's perspective, right? Because I had to build my own startup. And uh, when you are building your own startup, you can't necessarily go ahead and hire technology architects because they're very expensive. So you have to start learning things from a technology architecture perspective and you have to kind of step up your game. Uh, so this course or series is for everybody who is uh, who has a lot of experience in programming and they now want to start moving up the ladder. Uh, so you spend some time as a technology architect and then uh, that kind of clears up your path for a, a CTO after a while. That's uh, a direction that people follow. Uh, or if you are building your own startup, obviously you need to be really good at technology architecture because you'll have to make all these decisions yourself. Okay. So let me give you a brief of what we'll be doing in the cities. But this, this, this brief is just very narrow, but we'll be doing so much more. This is just a narrow view that I'm going to show you. So we'll be firstly in the, in the, in the first few videos when this series starts. Uh, so this is the first video, which is just like the introduction, but uh, the, the next video onwards. We'll be firstly talking about architecture characteristics. So when you're uh, thinking about the technology or the product that you're building, right? You have to think of it from a macro view, but you're taking into account so many different factors. You're taking, taking into account the deployability of the program, right? Uh, because if it's too complex, if it's, let's say, on Kubernetes and Docker and all of those things, to deploy it needs to be easy, right? So uh, you need to take all the decisions based on the deployability. Elasticity, performance, reliability, simplicity, testability. Now, I'm not going to go into each of these because I'm going to make videos on each of these and we're going to go into detail of what they all mean. But I just give you an example of what uh, deployability is so that you kind of understand, uh, you know, what everything will be about. But we'll actually dig down deeper into every single thing, right? Um, so, and then you have fault tolerance, modularity, cost, right? So as an architect, you also have to think about cost. You're not just talking about technology all the time. You're also talking, thinking from a business perspective in the sense how much, how viable is it to even build something like that in this kind of an architecture. And then you have to think about scalability, right? right? So that's the major, uh, major concern. So I can make it into bold because you're thinking about scalable systems. That's why you're being hired as an architect. You're, you're thinking about the whole product that you're building. So it needs to be scalable, right? Everything needs to be very independent and it needs to be fault tolerant. So we'll be talking about fault tolerance and scalability quite a bit, okay? Now, uh, the decision criteria. Now, there are some decision criteria. Again, we'll be going into each of these. So first is the domain expertise, data architecture, organization factors, domain architecture, isomorphism, monolith versus distributed, how do you want to go, right? Uh, so usually, you probably already know that monolith is for smaller kind of programs, distributed is when you want to really, you know, increase fault tolerance and um, you want to it's basically critical systems and all that, right? And data flow, but we'll talk about everything in detail. Don't worry if, if you don't understand any of these terms. That's why I'm not going into anything in detail because or talking about these because I know it'll get really, really uh, advanced for some of you in very short period of time. I don't want that to happen. I want you guys to stick with me through the entire series. And then you have your data flow and then you have your communication sky style, right? Synchronous and asynchronous. So I teach programming. I'll be teaching programming. that will keep continuing going on. I'll be teaching Golang, Rust, Python, all of that. But then this is for people who are really good programmers already. This is for people who want to step up, right? Who who will have people who will have programmers programmers working with them on their team, right? So uh, like I own a startup, and then I have 
12, 15 developers working with me. So I'm mostly in, uh, involved in the architecture side of things or the system design side of things, right? I'm not probably actively coding every single day. Um, so this is basically a decision criteria. And uh, then you have the architectures and we'll be going into deep detail on every single architecture. So we'll have, uh, you'll, you've probably heard about these things, uh, but some of these could be new to you. The popular ones are monolith is very popular, right? Uh, the spelling here I've written wrong, so I'll say monolith. And then you have microservices, um, spelling again, <laughs> I missed up the spelling. So we'll, uh, so these two are very common. You you hear the, about them quite a bit, monolith and, micro, monolith and microservices, right? And then you have micro kernels, you have modular monoliths, you have microservices, you have layered, event-driven, space-based architecture, client-server architecture, master-slave, pipe filter, broker architecture, peer-to-peer, -peer, MVC. MVC is very, again very common. And then you have Blackboard, Interpreter, and there's so many more, so many more. And then uh, the thing is, uh, we'll talk about the major ones, but we'll also talk about all the other ones. Um, and, and then some could be a mix in the sense you could have event-driven microservices which are written in an MVC format, right? So you can have mixture of all of these. Um, and um, these are your architectures. Uh, now, design patterns and system design, those those are kind of terms uh, and, and topics that these are really big topics, right? Design patterns is a very big topic and system design is another huge topic. So I don't necessarily want to mix that up with architecture, even though an architect is required to kind of uh, know uh, system design and uh, design patterns really well, but I won't be mixing it up out here. This is mostly uh, purely software uh, related architecture, technology related architecture, okay? Because design patterns and system design, I'm going to have different series for them. And all of this content is coming out for, uh, like I said, for experienced people. Now, um, there are few things that you must have heard about in the market. So one is software architecture, cloud architecture, database architecture, solutions architecture. And when you're starting out as a technology architect or when you're thinking, starting to think of things or, or technology as an, uh, from an architect's point of view, right, about how things work together, uh, you will be bombarded with these four terms and you'll be wondering exactly what uh, is what, right? Now, uh, database architecture is a completely different thing altogether. We won't be... Uh, we'll be talking about databases and how they work in the technology, architect, uh, te technology architecture, but we won't be digging down very deep into databases, okay? So database ar architecture is a very different thing altogether, right? Mostly what we'll be talking about will be software architecture, cloud, and solutions architecture, okay? Now database, we'll, we'll be talking about databases in cloud architecture and solutions architecture, but database architecture, uh, to go deeper into it is a separate field altogether. I can share a lot of resources with you to learn. Right. And solutions architecture, basically, uh, you know, we'll be th thinking about the technologies that we have to use at every single stage. So like, let's say we start with the POC of a product, then we go to an MVP stage, we go to a scale up stage, all of these three stages, you have to think very differently from a solutions architecture point of view, right? You have to think about the kind of technologies that you'll be using the kind of, uh, you know, uh, basically, tools that you'll use a kind of deployability you'll have, you'll have to think about a lot of things from a solutions architecture point, uh, perspective. Uh, as a solutions architect, you'll have to be very informed and updated about the latest tech in the, on the market. And you'll have to find the fastest and best tech, like I said, you know, POC, MVP, or uh, scale up stage. Uh, you have to find the best uh, tech at each stage. Now, there are uh, these considerations that we have taken up, right? The, uh, the considerations like deployability and fault tolerance scalability, but there's so much more here. There's so much more in the sense, like let's say as a startup, your priority could be uh, building the product really fast, or you know, even if it's an, a POC, it needs to be scalable. Or uh, like what I'm trying to say here is, we, we will also dig, dig deep into serverless because serverless gives you the ability to um, not manage the infrastructure too much, but still work on your business logic and still scale quite a bit, right? So we, we'll talk about serverless also quite a bit. So. These are the details that we'll be talking about. Now, let me share with you the books that we'll be, uh, that I'll be read, that I've, uh, you know, uh, that I'll be distilling all the information from, okay? So, um, I'll I'll also share the links of these books uh, in the description box, okay? And what you can do is, if you want to buy them, you can buy them. If you uh, don't want to, uh, you know, take the hassle of reading all of those and just rely on, you know, uh, my uh, ability to, so now let's talk about the books that I'll be um, distilling all the information from. So there are these five books that I have read and reread for a long period of time. 
and uh, that I've always gone back to. Okay. And these are the books that I recommend if in case you want to really go ahead and buy these are the books I recommend. And um, even if you don't buy these books, even if you don't read these books, it's completely okay because I'm anyways going to be discussing all of my information that I've gained from these books and also all the information that I've applied in the real world uh, in this course. Okay. And this is going to be a long course. I'm, I'll keep uploading videos on this uh, on cloud architecture. Okay. So the first book is Cloud Native Architectures. This book is amazing. It's by Pact. You can check it out. Okay. Second is Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Third is Cloud Native Development Patterns. Then Foundations for Architecting Data Solutions. Software Architecture Patterns by O'Reilly. And you have Software Architecture, the hard parts, okay? You can slow down the video. I've gone through them quickly. Slow down the videos, take, take screenshots, and then you can go ahead and buy these books. Uh, now, uh, there's the session that I'm taking on Scalar on uh, 29th. It's where I'll be showing how to uh, architect extremely scalable applications. And mostly the information that I've shown you uh, and a little bit more advanced information uh, will be here. And I'll be doing like five, four to five different exercises on how to you know, actually build or how to actually design an architecture. So if you have time and if you're available, it's a completely free uh, masterclass. It's a masterclass, it's three hours and it starts at 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So feel free to convert that into your own uh, local Standard Time. And if you have time, you can join in. About 590 people have registered and more will, uh, I think, sign up, hopefully. So, uh, I mean, even if you don't sign up, even if you don't come to this session, it's completely okay because on YouTube, you're going to be learning uh, all of that probably obviously a lot more because the series is going to keep continuing so this uh, in this course uh, this session i'll be just teaching for three hours and all of the things that i can cramp into those three hours i'll try and teach but this on youtube it's going on it's going to go on forever <laughs> all right so thanks a lot for watching and uh, and i'll see you in the next video for this uh, series and um, and I'll be creating more such awesome content for experienced and senior guys now. Okay, so anybody more with more than five years of experience to 15, 20, 25 years of experience, you're more than welcome to uh, watch these videos and learn uh, architecture and system design. I'll be having a separate uh, series on system design and separate series on design patterns. So we'll get to learn a lot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.